All right, I want to do a video on our tours for uh, feeding chickens. I'm right outside our chicken coop. Um, usually I like to come out here first thing in the morning. Um, right now it's 7.20, sun's just coming up. And uh, these guys are hungry. They've been in their coops all night. Uh, we like to coop them up. And uh, let's go ahead and go over there and see, uh, let's go ahead and feed them. Check them out. So in this uh, this chicken coop, we have about, I don't know, probably 25 birds. And uh, it's a mixture of uh, roosters and hens. I'm gonna let them out so they can free range and then I can get in there, change out their water and uh, give them feed and all that good stuff. We have uh, wire welded uh, fencing with the J clips. Um, wrapped around this thing and that's just to keep them safe at night from predators um, but the first thing I like to do is here's a little tip uh, to save on feed cost if you have a little bit of uh, uh, pasture or yard um, let the guys out in the morning or let the hens out in the morning the chickens out in the morning and let them free range a little bit if you can keep an eye on them and keep them safe and that way uh, they'll go out and get bugs and all that stuff and then they'll come back for the food so all right, I'm gonna let them out. They're gonna automatically run out, start scratching around, finding bugs, dust bay, whatever they have to do, which is good, because that'll give me time to sneak inside here and uh, do what I need to do, collect eggs, open the egg box, nesting boxes up, um, and clean it out and get an idea of what, what type of stuff I need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and let them out. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Come on out, come on out. All right, so now I can come into the coop and see what we got going on. Obviously they need some food, so let's give them some food. All right, I'm gonna give them a few scoops here. Here we go. Let's get one more scoop. I right, need two scoops. All right. So this should give them enough food, and then I'll force them to uh, go out and free range. Um, I don't like to fill this thing up all the way, uh, simply because if I do, they'll just sit here and eat it all day. So I kind of ration them. Uh, out a little bit and that way they can eat from here and still go out there and they don't just fill up on this saves me uh, saves me money All right the important thing for uh, chickens is to have clean water. Uh, this one's been out all day yesterday It's uh, a little light. So I'm gonna go ahead and refill it and then clean it off okay. have this uh, 55 gallon drum full with these uh, Waters right here. They work good. Uh, I just like to give them extra water easier access just in case All right, so that's it. So now they have fresh water and food. All right, the next thing I do is come and check and see if, they're, if I have any eggs. I have four so far. I have a lot more hens in that, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave these in here for a minute until later on when I come out and get the rest of the eggs. Okay, the next thing that I do is check on the chicks. We have uh, 12 chicks in here, and uh, it's about 60 degrees at night here. We're in East Texas, and it is uh, September, the end of September, so it's important to uh, keep heat lamps on the chicks. We want to keep them at around 95 to 98 degrees. Um, pretty much try to be at all times. Uh, during the day, we can cut the heat lamps off and let them outside to eat and drink, and then they can cuddle up if, they're, if they get too cold. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and let them out. Let's go check them out. All right, here's what it looks like inside. Nice, happy chicks, heat lamp, uh, off the 
off the hay there so it doesn't catch fire. And they're ready to go eat. So let's look for food. Hey, get out of there. Okay, before all the other chickens come in here, I'm gonna go ahead and hey, get out of here. That naked neck. All right, it was kind of hard to video and feed them at the same time, but I uh, put some chick starter uh, in their feed and then they have water. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the door open so they can go back up there if they get uh, cold. I did cut the heat lamp off because we want to save a little bit of energy, but uh, they should be fine. Uh, these are about two weeks old, and uh, we got some barred rocks, and I forget the other breed, but they're all pullets, so let's see if I can get, you can kind of see here. All right, so that's pretty much the morning chicken chores. Morning chicken chores. Try to say that. Um, and it's 7:40, so basically that took me about 15 to 20 minutes, give or take. Uh, and that was just feeding, watering, letting them out, and doing like a quick look over and make sure everybody's okay. Make sure we didn't have any predators coming uh, at night. And um, but yeah, that's it. Hey guys, today Brooke and I are still working on this little bed here. We're doing a little bit of weeding. And then I really just want to get a few of these perennials in before winter hits. This is Ruelia and Dianthus. Um, I want these to be able to root in and get established. So I'm just trying to get them in the dirt before it gets too cold. I like to plant flowers in all of my beds, especially perennials because they come back every year. Um, but I do this because I want to attract pollinators to each of my, my garden beds. Um, when I, I find that when I don't do this, sometimes there's a plant in a bed that doesn't get pollinated very well. So um, I try to plant things that will attract bees and wasps and all that good stuff um, to each of my beds. This Ruelia is a great plant. This is the dwarf variety. It self seeds and it spreads quite a bit, but it's pretty easy to divide. Um, and I'm also planting the Dianthus because that one also spreads. It gets nice and big and it has really pretty flowers on there. And it's pretty, a, it's a pretty prolific bloomer. Um, I'll show you another plant that was this size when I planted it earlier in the season that is huge now. Also, both Dianthus and Ruelia do really well as an understory plant so they can handle full sun or partial shade or even full shade, which I really like um, because a lot of the plants that I'll plant in this bed will end up being pretty big plants that might shade out these flowers. I also find that Dianthus holds its own when it's crowded with other plants. <laughs> Got a new egg basket? Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. I like the blue. Oh, look at that one. Yeah, that one's cool. It's big. Sweet. Pretty blue. Look at this color. It's like a ombre. Oh yeah, she always lays ombre eggs like that. Um, I forget which one that is. It's one of our black beauties. Mm -hmm. So Brick and I are about to cut up some harvest some Malabar spinach for the bunny.
So we keep our bunnies in this bunny tractor on the ground. Um, they can dig out if they wanted to, but they don't. We move them every day so they have fresh grass to eat and we give them lots of fresh veggies from our garden. We don't feed them any rabbit feed whatsoever. They don't need it because they get plenty of fresh stuff from our garden and from um, being in this tractor. In the winter time when stuff starts to die down, we will supplement with rabbit feed, but um, pretty much from spring until this point, we don't really feed them anything but fresh veggies and uh, fresh grass and weeds and all that good stuff. And that's kind of what they're meant to eat and they're really healthy for it. Um, in the early spring, we also free range our rabbits. Um, so what we do is we just let them out all day long to roam the property and then they come in with the chickens at night. They actually will go into the chicken coop with the chickens at night. It's pretty funny. We just haven't been keeping them in, we haven't been letting them free range right now because they've been eating up all the new sprouts in my garden. So when I've got new starts in the garden, I don't let them free range because I don't want them to eat them up before they grow. Um, but a lot of the times they do get to free range and they will go into the chicken coop at night with the chickens or they'll just come to us and we'll put them up. Um, but most of the time they just go in with the chickens at night. So we just lock them up at night with the chickens and we let them out during the day. And we haven't had any issues with predators. Even in this um, bunny tractor, we have had zero issues with predators digging under it or anything like that. Um, and we do have our dog, our Great Dane, that roams the property. So he kind of keeps the stuff off the property. So it works out pretty well for us. I want to keep doing updates on this birdhouse gourd. Because um, look how much it's grown even from yesterday's video. It's got a bunch of new shoots shooting off and more blooms. I'm really hoping that this gives me some treehouse gourds because, or birdhouse gourds, sorry, because I'm kind of excited about this plant. I think I might have enough time if the first frost holds off until December, which I'm crossing my fingers that it does. I also want to keep updating on the loofah because I'm really interested to see how quickly these loofahs will grow once they're pollinated um, so I kind of want to keep a diary of that so you may see quite a few updates on this loofah in our videos um, for the next couple of months. Here's a shot of the tall Ruelia also known as Mexican Petunia. This is one of my favorite perennials to grow in my garden because they can just really take over. They can be a little invasive, um, but they're easy to manage. You just dig them up and you plant the, the extra plants somewhere else. This is a Thai chili plant. We love making um, Thai papaya salad and stuff like that. So this is a perfect chili for that. They turn purple before they turn red, which is really interesting and they're super prolific. Over here are the yard long beans that we picked from yesterday. I've already got a few more that are ready to pick. Um, that's why I love this plant because it's a super fast grower and a great producer. Over here is the prettiest bell pepper I've ever grown. It's a purple bell pepper. I just love the way this color shines in my garden and it, as a bonus, it has cancer fighting properties because it's purple. Uh, these are volunteer zinnias. <laughs> I'm gonna let them grow. They probably won't have enough time to flower before it gets too cold, but we'll see. And this is that dianthus that I was talking about earlier that was the size of the ones I just planted that is huge now. And it was growing in pretty much full shade because it was the understory of all the big stuff I had in this bed. Mm -hmm. I forget what these are called, they're an annual, but these are one of my favorite flowers to plant in my garden beds because they're kind of like a spiller. Jack! What you doing in there, Jack? Here we've got some garlic coming up and then I believe this is um, some kale and then of course there's some volunteer zinnias in there also. And I've also planted or seed started a few other things in this bed um, that are winter, winter veggies. We'll see how those do like broccoli, stuff like that. And here's 
here's a spent zinnia. I'm gonna pull off some of the seeds so you can see and then in the springtime and the summertime I just throw them right back into the bed. Um, again, these probably won't have time to give me any blooms or to get to maturity before it gets too cold. This is a wolf spider I spotted crawling across the grass and she's got hundreds of babies on her back. Oh, I hate spiders. This creeps me out so much, but hey, what can you do? All right, it was fun. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos and hit that bell for notifications. We try to post a video every single day.